Hello and welcome to the first video in my Ableton 10 Basics series. This series covers the fundamentals that you should know in order to make the most out of Ableton Live as a music producer. Just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like yourself. So to start off this process, the first thing we're going to do is disable any unnecessary startup processes. Essentially, whenever your computer boots up, um, certain programs that you may have installed might start up initially with the computer and run in the background. When an app is running in the background, it effectively takes up CPU resources and these resources could otherwise be used for music production. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna type in task manager. You can also use the shortcut, which is, a, which is control alt delete, and then you click task manager right there. And then we're going to click startup. Now we're just gonna skim through here and look for any programs that we really don't want starting and running in the background while we are using our computer. So for instance, one that I don't really want starting up is Skype. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, highlight it, and then click disable. So effectively by disabling that, then it's preventing that from uh, that application from starting whenever I start my computer up. And whenever you disable a good portion of these, you'll notice that your computer will actually start faster. Another one I saw earlier that I did not want starting was this one. Disable that. If, for instance, the app is controlling something that you think is important, like let's say maybe your keyboard or wireless mouse or something, like for instance, I have a RGB keyboard that relies on this Razer Synapse 3 app to run properly. So I'm gonna leave that one enabled. Okay, the next thing we'll wanna do is go through and uninstall any bloatware or unused programs. More or less when you delete unused programs, it frees up space on your hard drive a clean hard drive is a fast hard drive. Basically, as a hard drive reaches, reaches its storage limit, then you'll actually notice the computer will start running pretty terribly. So do yourself a world of favor and just do your best to keep your files and media and programs clean and organized. So we're going to go ahead and go in here. Just going to click add or remove programs. Now I personally do my best not to hang on to programs I don't use, which I'm sure there might be a couple in here, but more or less you're just gonna skim through here looking for things you absolutely know that you don't need. I used to code a lot, so I used to use Git, but I don't really do that much anymore. So I'm going to Go ahead and un uninstall that for now. Sure, they probably have a newer version anyways. All right, and it's as simple as that. Just try not to delete stuff that, you know, clearly might have an effect on your machine, like uh, these redistributable packages from Windows or Microsoft. Or if it's something you know you're going to use or have used in the past, then just go ahead and leave it on there. All right, this next step really only applies if you're on a laptop, but essentially what you'll want to do is you'll want to go down here and type something like power settings. And more or less, it will give you this performance and energy option and you could probably click the battery down here from your laptop. I'm on a desktop, so a battery symbol does not show up. But you'll just may want to make sure you're on high, high performance or best performance mode because this will make sure that 
your CPU and everything else that keeps your computer running really well is getting all the necessary power to make everything run at maximum capacity. The next step we're going to cover is how to stop Windows from disabling USB ports. This doesn't really affect the CPU too much, but it can cause some frustration if, let's say, you, are, you walk away from your computer for 15 minutes and you come back and suddenly your MIDI controller isn't working. And this might happen because Windows has disabled the USB port that your MIDI controller was working through. So we're going to go here, we're going to type device manager. We're going to go down to universal serial bus controllers. And not all of these have this option, but the ones that do, you should change. But anyways, we're going to right click. We're going to click properties. We're going to go to power management. And right here, there's a box that says allow the computer to turn this device off to save power. So we don't want that. So if you're, you walk away from your computer and you know, it's been 15, 20 minutes, your computer goes to sleep, then it might shut off your mini controller or whatever else. You come back, you jump back into Ableton and then all of a sudden it's like glitched out. It's not working. So you either have to restart Ableton or restart your mini controller. And it's just, it's annoying. It's happened to me before and it can be very annoying. So just make sure these this little box is unchecked. Click OK and do that for whichever ones will allow it and you're good to go. The final step in this video that I would like to cover is how to disable system sounds on Windows. And you might ask why you would want to do this. Well, oftentimes playback, the playback volume of your DAW can it can vary in volume when compared to the volume that's running on Windows, like for the system sounds. So let's say <clears throat> I had a full mix that I was working on and I pushed everything down 10 dB to ensure nothing was clipping on the master. And then I turned up the volume knob on my audio, audio interface so that way I could properly hear the mix and make changes. Well, if you were to get a Windows notification in the middle of doing that, then that notification would not be pushed back 10 dB. It would be at the normal volume, whatever it's set at. So when it plays back, it could potentially be like loud enough to damage your ears. I've actually had this happen to me before and it's not a fun experience and it like scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? But anyways, let's go ahead and cover that. I think we just type system sounds, system sounds, change system sounds. Now we click over here where it says sound scheme and just make sure you click no sounds. Click apply and then click OK and you are set to go. Later on in this course, when I actually dive into Ableton itself, I will be going over some additional ways to reduce the strain on your CB CPU natively inside of Ableton. For now, I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you back for the next one. Thanks again and have an amazing day.